everyone, it's Cooking with Anto here. So I'm going to teach you how to make some four cheese spinach manicotti. It's an easy recipe. I use my basic homemade crepe recipe instead of using store-bought pasta. That's just the way I enjoy it. I stuff it with four cheese and spinach, but possibilities are pretty endless. You can stuff them with whatever you wish. It's a recipe that freezes well for later use, as well as making it beforehand for like a large party, let's say. So thank everybody who's continuously watched me and shared my videos and, you know, commented on recipes that they've tried. And it really means a lot to me because it lets me know that I'm doing a good job and that people do like the food. And um, if you have any requests on things that you would like me to make, let me know. Send me some private messages. Find me on Facebook also, Cooking with Anto. Let's get that page kicked started because I actually um, communicate with people there quite often. And I would love to see pictures of food that you've made. And um, I do answer messages fairly quickly. And um, also check out um, what's on your plate because it's an awesome group with tons of people who know what they're doing. They cook delicious food and always post pictures. It'll make you hungry. And um, they're really cool people because they always let me post my videos there. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and sharing and putting up with my lots of talking and blah, 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 blah. I know I'm going to get some complaints about the chit-chatting, but someone else has to deal with it besides my husband. So let's get over it, okay? Anyway, thanks for watching. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to get started on our sauce, right? Because it's going to have to simmer for at least a half an hour on the stove. So while it's simmering, we can work on our crates, okay? So it's best to kill two birds with one stone, or um, this recipe would take very long to cook, all right? So um, please don't mind my sniffling. I swear I've had a cold like the whole month of December. It's been unreal. So we have our onions in here with some olive oil. Now we're going to put in our garlic, okay? And we're going to saute that until fragrant, about a minute or two. And then we'll add in our tomato sauce. All right, so you want to add in your sauce. I'm using um, tutto rosso, just a regular sauce. You have to season it yourself, of course. Step back gonna be messy you make your crepes all right so isn't that good delicious all right so here's the mixture for the um, crepes okay I have my flour my eggs you know the ingredients are always at the bottom of the video so what you're gonna do is you're gonna add in your milk so these are gonna be very thin uh, they're not going to have the consistency of pancakes they need to be way thinner than that because crepes are very, very thin. They're like a thin version of pancakes. So you mix them gentle in the beginning just to get, you know, the eggs incorporated. And then you continue to do it until you see that very thin um, batter. So when you put your, um, you know, spoon or your utensil in it and you lift it up, it should fall off of the utensil like water. So here's what it looks like when it's nice and thin and the perfect consistency. You see how it's pretty watery? So obviously not as thin as water. It's you still want some kind of um, thickness to it, just not um, not too thick because then you can't make a crepe out of it. You'll see what I'm talking about when you get to your um, frying pan. There's like a maneuver you have to do to get the crepe um, to cook nice and round and thin. So you have your um, pot heated up nice to about a medium high. Some nonstick spray is the best. Um, so what I do is I take about a quarter cup measuring and I put it into the frying pan and then I quickly maneuver it around in a circular way. So I, you know, I pull the pan toward my body and then away from my body and I kind of just do that until I get the perfect looking circle um, for the crepe. And then you just leave it there. It doesn't take long to cook. So you, you'll know when it's ready, when the top part of the crepe doesn't look shiny anymore. Then you can kind of flip them. And then when you flip them, you only leave them there for a few seconds to get the other side set. Um, so this is probably the most tedious part of the recipe, okay? Because you're sitting here and you have to make a whole bunch of crepes. And this particular crepe recipe makes some leftover uh, because I like to make dessert crepes. So um, if you don't want any leftover crepes, you would just half the recipe. So now you flip it because you see it's nice and dry looking. It's not shiny anymore. Flip and that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, it's really simple and they're paper thin. Like if you can see your fingers through it, that means that that's the perfect desired thickness because you're going to be rolling them and you don't want like thick, thick layers of crepe with, a, you know, a little bit of filling. You want it to be equal. Let me show you um, the amount of thickness that I'm talking about here. I'll pull a crepe out. You see, 
how like paper thin that looks. You can see my hand through it kind of. And um, that's just what it's supposed to be. It's the best way uh, to make a crepe. Okay, so on to the next. So now what we're working on is the filling, okay? And um, the filling is pretty easy. It's a whole bunch of cheeses mixed together. But then I have some frozen spinach I'm putting in mine, right? And what I do is frozen spinach is extremely watery when it comes in the box. So what you have to do is you have to put it in a cheese um, cheesecloth and you squeeze it and you can get all of the liquid out. And to do it in a cheesecloth is so that you're not losing pieces of spinach everywhere in your sink. Now, they sell this at supermarkets. I highly suggest you get it, especially if you cook with a lot of spinach or you're making things that you need to squeeze out, like anything with ricotta. So anyway, here's the spinach going into the mixer and you're going to mix it up. That's my doggy barking in the background. Must be the mailman coming. So I may be a little nasally because I'm getting over a cold and my nose is kind of stuffed. Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, I have three cheese in here. I have some uh, onion powder, some garlic powder, and um, spinach, okay? And I mix it all up, and that's what it's supposed to look like. And um, that's your filling. Now, get creative. You can have so many different types of cheeses in yours. You can mix cheese with meat to make, you know, um, an unconventional lasagna type of dish without having to worry about the layering. Um, but these are just the traditional uh, cheese and spinach manicotti. And um, this, this filling does enough for the amount of crepes I've made, but you're still going to have some left over as a dessert crepe. Remember that. Don't forget. Um, so have that crepe recipe if you don't want any leftovers. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your pan that you're cooking, you're baking your manicotti in, and you're going to line it with some sauce, the sauce that we've made earlier. And um, then you want to do that so it doesn't stick, okay? And it has that nice sauce on the bottom because you just, again, don't want it to stick. So that's what you do. So you're going to start preparing your crepes now. Okay, now they've cooled. Um, it's the reason why you make your filling ahead of time. So, all right, so you get your filling and you put it in the center of the crepe. I don't know, I'm pretty, you know, I would I would say I like mine to be filled pretty well. So I put, I don't know, let's say about three to four tablespoons maybe, or maybe three tablespoons, and then I just kind of put it down the middle of the crepe and I evenly spread it. Oof, I'm recording this after I've recorded the video, so I had to actually sneeze, so I paused the audio. Okay, so now this is when you're just going to squeeze them over. It's going to look a little bit like a burrito, okay? So you're going to do that, and you're going to continue to do that with the rest of your manicotti, and you're just going to line them in the pan. You put them seam side down so the filling doesn't come out. So there you go. That's how many as I fit into my pan. Um you know, and when you're making a whole bunch for, for many people, you need a bigger pan, obviously. So you put some sauce up on the top and then you put some mozzarella cheese. Okay. I like mine with some cheese on the top. Then you put it in the oven for about, I don't know, 20 minutes just to get everything heated through. Okay. All right. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Um, 350 on the oven, by the way. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, almost like similar a little bit to a lasagna, but it's not. And um, it looks absolutely delicious and perfect. And these freeze really, really well. Um, so let me show you. This is what it looks like when it's plated. So um, it's a pretty good serving. I would say the average adult probably wouldn't eat more than two or three. Um, and that's if they're hungry, okay? I, I, I can have like one and a half before I really feel full. So here are the, uh, here's what it looks like on the inside, okay? And that's the crepe and... It just looks absolutely delicious. And it's and you can put some grated Parmesan on the top. I just want to show you what it all looks like and see the cheese coming out of it. And then I'm actually going to flip around here so you can see the other side as well. And um, I think at this point, because I recorded this um, previously, I'm not talking at the moment. So I think I was eating at this point and I just zoomed in to show you what it looks like. <laughs> so anyway, yep, that's what it looks like. It's absolutely delicious. These freeze really well. So when you fill them and then you t you flip your crepes, okay, you just throw them in the freezer. You don't bake them first. Throw them in the freezer, and then when you're ready to bake them, you bring them out, let them defrost for about an hour, then you freeze them, then you bake them that way. So, uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. It's absolutely delicious. And, um, yeah, if you try the recipe and you like it, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.